Greetings viewers, I am Eric the Car Guy, but you knew that already. Today I'd like to do something a little bit different and that is, well not necessarily a tool review because I've done those in the past, but I just want to walk through my experiences with my new sandblaster and dust reclaimer that I recently got for the shop. Check it out. Apologies for not removing this stuff underneath here, but it's great storage. Anyway, this is the new uh, sandblasting cabinet that I've got. It's made by Black Bull. Um, it has a light at the top as well as a side entry point over here, which oftentimes uh, the seal is really good and I have to pry that open to get in here. But here's what the inside of the sandblaster looks like. Now out here is where the compressed air goes in, but the air has to be regulated down to, uh, I have mine regulated down to about 40 PSI or so. So I've made this uh, sort of makeshift pressure regulator that I can take around the shop and just plug it in. And that's exactly what I do here. I just sort of come down in and add it in like that and plug my air hose in here. Uh, it has separate power for the light and that's the only thing the light does is the light, uh, well, the power just goes for the light. It doesn't do anything else within the unit. Everything else is controlled by compressed air. In fact, uh, this is how it works. So here's the gun and this came with a couple of replaceable tips because I would assume these are somewhat consumable considering they're dealing with abrasives all, all the time. Anyway, you might notice that tube leading down underneath. Um, that's housing all of the, uh, well, the stuff that I'm using to sandblast with. And it keeps going down in there and collecting and being drawn up through that tube uh, with the compressed air through this, this hose. So the compressed air comes in here goes through, goes into the gun, and as the compressed air comes out, it helps draw the sand up through it, or whatever you're using to blast with, up through the gun, and then onto the material that you're working with. Now, I got mine from j and Tool Sales, and I'll link it down in the description, but the keen-eyed viewer may look at this and say, this looks an awful lot like a lot of these sandblasters that I've seen uh, from other companies, but they don't come with the light. That's the difference. So if you're looking at some of those cheaper models, there's no light on top. I mean, the blast cabinet and everything, I think is almost identical to be honest with you. Uh, but that is the difference. And you need a light when working in here, believe me. Now looking at this, you might think to yourself, ah, well, that's not too bad. Well, it obviously comes in a box and you have to assemble it, but it's a bit trickier to assemble than you might imagine. And the reason for that is because the only access you really have is through here. So those fasteners all the way over on the other side, well, you got to go through here to get to them. And some of them needed to be put together uh, on the inside here. So know that <laughs> it may look easy, easy or seem easy, but assembly is a little trickier than uh, you might imagine. My sandblaster also came with some extra sealing material and new, uh, I don't necessarily want to call them tearaways, but on the inside there are just pieces of uh, plastic that you can put over the inside of this and over the inside of the light shroud to where when these get all fogged up or whatever from you know getting hit with abrasives over time uh, you can replace them and have a clear view it's super important to be able to actually see what you're working on in here here's the media that i'm using it's glass bead i also got it from jmb tool, tool sales i'll link it down in the description it is 80 grit now i'll share a somewhat embarrassing story that i hope will help you uh, about my experiences with this sandblaster. Now, originally, I did not have this dust reclaimer, which this I got from Harbor Freight separate from, from this unit. It's a pretty simple setup. It's got this universal mount to where you can pretty much mount it anywhere. Um, my walls are wood, so I just ran some uh, heavy duty self-tapping screws in there. It's fairly simple and you need to do this on occasion. Um, the circuit breaker's off to this, but you just uh, undo these tabs on the side and you can lift this whole thing out of here and you can see the air filter which goes down in there a little bit farther it's a little hard to do one-handed but i think you get the idea anyway uh so i have this dust reclaimer now and you might say to yourself what do you need a dust reclaimer for well you don't really need it so much because you can use a shop vac in fact they give you provisions at least with this unit on the side a shop vac port will plug right into this. And that's what I did initially. 
Unfortunately, this is the embarrassing part. So when I did hook the shop vac up to try to clear out the dust as you work in here, because it does get substantial. Once you start blowing media around in here, you virtually can see nothing inside of here without some way to remove it. Anyway, I hooked the shop vac up and this is what happened. So I said to myself, eh, well, the shop vac may be too strong for this, eh, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I went for the dust reclaimer and for two reasons. One, I wouldn't have to lug my shop vac over here, not like I use this all the time. But the number one reason why I like the dust reclaimer is because it does exactly what it says. Uh, underneath here, you can see you can open this up and I, and I bought this uh, expensive piece of plastic actually. Uh, to go up under here and I can collect whatever stuff that collects inside the collector and then put that back inside the blast cabinet to be reused. I can't necessarily do that with my shop vac, but here's the thing that you need to know in order for a dust reclaimer or a shop vac to work because you can also use a shop vac, but like I said, you won't be getting your media back. So on the back of this unit here, there it is, see that hole? Well, when it ships, this hole, oh, I'll get that in a minute. This hole has this plastic cover over it. Well, I said to myself, if I'm putting a vacuum inside of an enclosed area, there's no way that I can get stuff out. So I was looking for a way to put a, a hole or something in the outside. Well, all I had to do was come back here, remove this, and this allows fresh air to pass in so that it can pass through and then go into the dust reclaimer. So that's on me. But I hope that information is useful to you. So look on the back. In fact, the instructions even show hooking the dust reclaimer, attaching it to the back of the sandblaster, and then attaching the hose here. Either way, no matter how you do it, uh, just know that there's going to have to be some way that fresh air gets in here. Now, if you're wondering about what this looks like on the other side, inside of here, you can see it's sort of blocked off. So it's not like it's a direct hole to the outside. And you could probably stuff something like maybe a scotch pad or something up in there if you really wanted to filter it out or whatever. But now that I've told you all about it, why don't we sandblast something? Because I'm sure you want to see it in action. Now you probably noticed that it's a bit dark over in this part of the shop at the moment, and that's by design. I turn off these shop lights whenever I'm working in here because there's so much glare on this window that I really can't see inside of it. Uh, but here is the light. Let me turn it on for you. So there's the light, and you can see in there a little bit better now with the light. Now we need some compressed air. Now I believe I said earlier that I have this set up for 40 PSI, and I was incorrect. The operating range of the unit is between 40 and 80 PSI, and I went just underneath 80 PSI. I think I was working on some particularly difficult stuff is, is why I did that. This is what I'm going to transform. And this was, as some of you may recognize, the brace from underneath my Type R that it completely rusted out that I removed and replaced with a new piece. Anyway, let's see what this looks like as metal without all this rust on it. I've also got my safety glasses on. All right, now we can put our material in here. Lock it up. Turn on the dust reclaimer. So this is what it looks like from this angle. My gloves are still staying on thanks to leaving that open. So with the reclaimer on, it's not so bad. Stupid GoPro didn't work for the other part. So you might re recall this. This is the lower control arm that I took off my 2012 Honda Odyssey. I'm not doing this whole thing, but I'll do enough to demonstrate how the sandblaster works. I have a note here about when you get done sandblasting things. When you go to remove this from a sandblaster, it's important that you don't remove it with your bare hands. Wear gloves or something like that uh, when you take it out of the sandblaster and as you handle this part until you get some primer or some kind of sealant on this. The reason is because your hands have oils on them 
and those oils will get on this freshly bare metal and cause it to rust. Now, obviously I don't care about this piece of metal. I just use it for demonstration purposes. But if you're gonna remove things from your sandblaster after you're done, be sure to wear gloves and protect the metal to prevent it from corrosion. And here's the result. A little bit of residue on the outside of it, but that's bare metal. Rust, paint, everything goes away. And it's pretty easy and kind of fun to do. And I don't know, I like it. But that's how the sandblaster works. Dust reclaimer, super, super helpful though. Super helpful. Otherwise, you just can't see. You can use your shop vac too, but then you'll lose your stuff. I'm sure you want to see the reclaiming part in action, and I do too, because as you can tell by my clean bowl, this is the first time I've used it. It's just hooked in there. I'm just going to unhook it. Wow. Look at that. And there's this thing on the side that I can hit and knock stuff loose with. Now that is quite a bit of stuff reclaimed. I think I got the perfect size bowl for this. Now you just take it and dump it right back in. Now I've just shown you my shop sandblaster, but I also got this one from JB Tool Sales. It's an external one. And I got this so I could do uh, all the rust on the underside of the Type R. So eventually when I take that car all apart, I'll go in and I'll use this one to sandblast the underside of that. And likely I'll be making a video of that and my experiences with this one as well. We got results. The reclaimer works awesome. Like I said, you can hook a shop back up and do the same thing, but you saw how much I got out of that. Now, it was, that wasn't just the amount from this that I cleaned another, the other side of this as a test to see how this would work. Before I hooked the reclaimer and everything up, there was dust everywhere. It was coming out of every pore and every orifice that it possibly could in this sandblaster. So you really need some fresh air coming in and some way to draw some stuff out. Like I said, shop back will work, but this thing, as you can see, was pretty easy to get back uh, some of the material that I was using for sandblasting and reuse it, which the stuff's expensive. Sandblasting can be very cathartic, very therapeutic. I enjoy it. I enjoy the results. 90% of painting is in surface preparation and this will get you a long way to it. And I hope the information in this video was useful to you if you're considering getting a sandblaster, if you have a sandblaster and you're having trouble with it, if anything. I, this is what I've learned. I hope this information helps you. If you have automotive questions, I ask you to head to airatthecarguy.com. I'll link that in the description along with other, other useful information, including some of the stuff and everything I used here today. Thank you so much for watching. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty, and I'll see you next time. Oh.